I got some babies. Um, I got quite a few. So I already have planned on expanding my flock um, for obvious reasons, like we want eggs, right? And that's part of being like the self-sufficient. Oh, wait, what? Little boogers are quick. Um, now I didn't get carried away, not yet. Chicken math is a real thing. I've got 10 baby chicks and I've got three ducks. Um, there is more in my future. I can't say when, but there's more. But I just kind of wanted to show you guys my setup because I'm off grid. And so people are probably like, like, how do you raise chicks if you don't have, you know, electricity? Which I do have electricity, okay? I don't use a heat lamp. Um, we, I, I put them in front of the wood stove, as you can, as you saw earlier in my video. And, I mean, it's working out. Like, I've had zero deaths. Everybody's thriving, everybody's happy, everybody's warm and fed, and they just, they're enjoying their lives. So I don't know if you know, but Becky, my chicken Becky, I don't know if I've showed her. Um, she is a cinnamon queen. Well, the guy said she's a cinnamon queen, but who knows? She's, you know, close to like a Rhode Island red. So anyways, these little chicks, I got four of them. They are Rhode Island reds, and they're going to look like Becky, and I'm really excited because I love Becky. In fact, um, today... Oh, gosh. Okay, so the chickens have been branching out since it's been warmer, and they've been, like, going a little further or a little, you know, different places around our property. And Becky comes running out of the woods, and there's one of my, um, Australorps behind her, which one of the all, it's the black chickens, um, comes running behind her, chasing her, and Becky's got something in her mouth. And I'm like, what in the world? To me, it looked like either a worm, like a really big worm, or a centipede. And so I'm chasing Becky around, and this other chicken's chasing Becky, trying to get whatever she's got in her mouth. And I finally get close enough to see Becky had a snake. She had a baby snake. It was about three or four inches, and she ate that sucker. As soon as the other chicken quit chasing her, she downed that sucker, like... I'm pretty proud of Becky. Like, she's not only providing eggs every day, but she is protecting the homestead. I just love it. Becky's the best chicken. I do say you won't be the best chicken, but right now, Becky has you beat. You're just a little cutie. Little cutie, and they're getting really... So these are just over um a week old. I got them last Tuesday. So I give or take, they were in transit for a day or two after being born so they're they're a week old and they're pretty big compared to my other chicks um because i went and got those chicks those rhode island reds on a tuesday <coughs> and that's all tractor supply had left and then we went back um thursday when they got their new shipment and i got some orpingtons and barred rocks and some ducks now i got some it's either Barred or Barred. I say Barred Rocks. Um, so, I had something happen with my chickens. It's kind of sad, but it happens. It's life, and especially on the homestead. So, I have two Barred Rocks, Ethel and Gloria. Well, Gloria, like, she had been acting kind of funny since I had gotten her. Not funny, but she just was kind of like seclusive like she would hang with the other chickens but she really wasn't very peppy and then over the course of the month that I had her she just slowly like started to deteriorate like her she just got more sluggish and she just wasn't coming like when I called and then she began to not eat well Gloria got really sick to the point where the last two nights I had her um because I had to call her and I didn't eat her because she was really sick I had her in the house the last two nights before I decided it she was suffering and I just needed to put her down um her eyes swelled up she was breathing with her mouth now there's a ton of chicken diseases out there so I can't point fingers and say which one it was I know it was a respiratory thing um because under their eyes is their sinuses like what we have that was all swelled up, but it was swelled so bad that her eyes were closed and she could just barely open them. And at this time, I just thought it would be more humane to put her down and safer for the rest of my flock because they were already exposed. And so I was kind of already risking them with having her already in there. And with being a new chicken owner, you know, I just, I just didn't think anything of it. So I just decided to put her down. I did it myself. I didn't like, I didn't like it because I wasn't, her death was not purposeful, you know, like I wasn't calling her for meat to feed my family 
or anything like that. I had just straight put her down and I buried her. Um, so I kind of got the hang of the whole like calling the chicken. I still have to learn the whole like cleaning process, but I didn't, I didn't care for it. Just like I said, because I was not, it was not purposeful, but I did it by myself. Paul was in here eating breakfast. So I did it by myself anyways. So she got sick. And then I noticed a couple of my other chickens. Um, my little Becky became kind of sick. She had some snot and sneezing. She was kind of, you know, lethargic, not as lethargic as Gloria. And then my little Ethel, which is the other Baird rock, which was, I believe probably her Gloria's sister, um, she became sick, and I did definitely notice, um, Ethel got really depressed after, um, Gloria died, and with depression, and then her being sick, she just, like, I was pretty sure she was going downhill, so I did a lot of research, and, um, I had people reaching out to me, because I'd made a video about Becky being sick on TikTok, and had people giving me suggestions, and one lady told me, um, this fish, antibiotics it's amoxicillin for fish and my husband had actually watched some videos and read some articles about preppers using fish antibiotics in their supply because they don't they're cheaper and they're easier to acquire right now the only thing people frown upon people taking the fish antibiotics is because they are not uh regulated by the fda so that's I'm, I'm not taking fish antibiotics by no means, but for chickens, it's okay. So I bought some of those, and I started them on those antibiotics last night. And this morning, I gave them another dose, and they seem to be doing a little better. Ethel has more pep in her step, which is good. And Becky clearly has more pep in her step because she's out there slaying snakes, y'all. She is slaying snakes. So well, I'm really excited for these little chickadees to get bigger. Um, like it. So they're, they're only, uh, so these right here, you can tell, they're definitely smaller than my other ones. Um, I don't want to say by a week, but pretty close, half a week, I don't know. There's a size difference, there's a size difference, but we definitely love them. And um, I'm turning my house into an, um, a chicken brooder, you know. Um, Paul has been lovely. He has not said anything about my chickens or anything like that. He is a little jealous because I've been spending so much time with these chicks, but they re they require a lot of my attention. They need love and they need food and water. And so he's just a little jealous right now. He feels like he got his nose cut off, but I mean, it is what it is. Okay. So this lighting's awful. Sorry. So let me show you. So we have our 20 gallon tote and I've got all of my good stuff I will show you in there. So what we did for this, right, um, we have some screening, like what you would have on a screen door. And we cut the top of the tote. Now I wish I, I could glue this down, which I probably will and can. It, but for now, this is what I have to do. We lay it and close it. And I have to close it because my Rhode Island Reds are beginning to want to like fly around a little bit, you know, like jump and fly up on like the top of the feeders. Um, and one tried to escape this morning. So we keep this on and also my children, so they're not in here playing with the chickens all the time. And my cats, cause my cats are really curious. And typically um, during the day I set them, I'll grab this, I set them in front of the window so they get their vitamin D, their sunlight, they can sit there in the sun and get warm. And my house is not cold and it's been really warm here in Tennessee, not Tennessee, why do I wanna say Tennessee? Oklahoma, why am I thinking Tennessee? <coughs> Anyways, um, I've got Tennessee on my mind, I don't know why. Actually, I know why, because, so if y'all have seen the news in that bad tornado that wiped through Tennessee, well, Cookville, um, was like wiped out with this tornado, a big portion of it. And we were only 20 minutes from Cookville. So that's why I'm thinking Tennessee. I don't know why I relate it to the chickens, but whatever. So anyway, so during the day, my chickens and ducks, and here's my duck setup. So they have a little pool, uh, as you saw in this morning's video. 
it is out of my daughter's Barbie dream house. Now, this is sufficient enough right now because the ducks are tiny. And as far as what duck breed, I am not sure. It's a, an assortment. So it didn't say any specifics at Tractor Supply. It said an assortment, but I looked it up. And they're either Mallards or the Rowan or Rowan duck, however you pronounce that. It's one of those. So, <coughs> Could be either one. We'll, we'll know when they get bigger. So I have their little um, Barbie dream pool. And um, I'm going to take it out at nighttime. I This is day one that I actually kept it in all day. But they get so bored. And it's more quality of life. Like even though they're ducklings. Like they need stuff to do. Right. Same with my chickens. Like I forgot to show you guys. So in here. Um, you can see I have some pieces of wood, which kind of is acting as like a perch. Um, they like to play on it. They like to sit on it, stand on it, whatever, even sleep sometimes. So I just try to give them things to do, like what they would do out in, you know, nature. You know, that plays back to me not using the heat lamp because in nature, the only heat that the chicks have is the hen, right? The body warmth of the hen. Um, so that's why I have my fingers crossed it would work and I was really nervous the first night I brought these chicks home I'm like, I really hope this works. I set them right directly in front of the wood stove not too close But not too far away So that way they have like a, a warm spot to go to Um in the box and if they get too hot they can kind of go in a different direction where it's not so warm I do that with the ducks too and it's working out. Um, we've made it all week. Nobody's died. Nobody's sick Everybody's happy so I figured it would work. I was hoping it would work and it has worked. So now if we were in winter and I tried this, I think I wouldn't be so successful because the floor is really drafty. And then waking up at nighttime would be every like hour and a half to try to keep that super hot for these chicks. So luckily, like I said, here in Oklahoma, it's been in the like high 60s. 70s and it's been warm and it's just been really beautiful and it's perfect chick condition chick growing condition and it's it's been working out well it's time to uh wrangle the chickens and give the three chickens their medicine you ever seen someone wrangle a chicken you about to uh, i got the fish amoxicillin there's the silkies the one i gotta give it to is blippy which is the black silky felicia look how cute she uh rolling some dirt up on her head and she looks like she got a brown wig on and uh there's becky and ethel we got to give the medicine to so this is um interesting and it took me a little bit to kind of figure it out but this is how i medicate my chickens oh becky okay so i got my chicken uh, my unwilling participant i need some tissue okay so basically i sit on my chicken like so and um kind of calmer she needs her nose wiped she's got some dirt mixed with snot i got my cup of medicine here just a small amount of water and one capsule i pulled apart and it's kind of a tricky part no becky she does not like this medicine no becky so you really gotta Ride the chicken. You gotta pin them between your legs. I'm, I can only imagine ah, how nasty this is. And they only need a little bit of this. Um, if you have a dropper, which a syringe would be so much easier, just three to four drops, right? Um, <laughs> Becky? Oh no, Becky! You hear? She's. Nope. Uh uh. Alright. She knows what's coming. She don't like it. It's good. It's gonna be good for you, baby. Okay, so then I kind of hold her neck up because she likes to pull her head down. She's got a drink. Let's do a little bit more. I know it's nasty, I know. Here, nope. Open, Becky. And I just want to make sure she's getting medicine because they need it. There. Okay. Now I'm just going to kind of pick the 
a booger off of her nose, which is utterly disgusting. Ech. There. Okay, Becky. Go on. You're welcome. I'm the chicken tender. Chicken number two. This is Blippi. She is my silky. Okay. She's the easiest out of the three. Just kind of sit on her. Let me fix this a little bit. Okay. Just kind of straddle the chicken. Hi, Blippi. Okay. She's really not a fan of this either, but she, like I said, she's the easiest of the three. Becky's probably gives me the hardest time. And you do the same thing, you just kind of hold their neck a little bit. Hey, Bip. Bip, open up. Good job, Lippy. One more. Here. Get Blippi. I know it's nasty, but you need it. Come on. Okay. Good job, Blippi. Good job. Hmm? It wasn't so bad. No, it wasn't so bad. All right. Get in the coop. Go. The coop? What are you doing? Get in the And off they go because they do what they want. Okay. So now, Becky's medicated. That's Raven. She's a Samani. We need Ethel. Right there's Ethel. And she is, she knows what's up. Ethel! Watch out, Raven. Move your butt. Yeah, okay, come here, Ethel. Come here. Oh, oh Lord. Okay, on my hand, she's on my hand, she's on my hand, she's on my hand, she's on my hand, okay. Nope, 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 nope. So, Ethel gives me the least of the problems of the three. Huh, Ethel. I think that's because she feels the crummiest. Okay, so, yep, oh, Ethel, okay. We'll do this one up a little closer. There. You can see Ethel. Her, she's beautiful, Bared Rock. She is not a fan of it either, but Ethel takes it much better than the rest. Okay, Ethel. Come on. Yeah, I know it's nasty. And she's really congested, so I gotta be kind of slow with her so I don't make her ass break. Yeah, it's okay. She's real clogged up, see her? It's like you got that loogie snot in the back of your throat. That's what, that's what she's got. Yeah. Poor baby. You ready? Alright, come on. Hang on, you got it. Yeah, she didn't like that. A little bit more. I know, I'm sorry. Most of that came out of your mouth. Look at poor baby. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, it's okay, okay. Nope, come here. Oh, God bless you. Oh, goodness. cussing. Spilling the water. While well, I'm out here playing with chickens, he's gonna say. Here, baby. Here. Poor 
baby. Here. Okay, now we're gonna stick her back in. Poor baby. Go on. She's so soft. Get up there. Get up in your little, your perch. Now she's, now she's gonna sneeze and all that gargle and, but I have noticed. So this will be my third dose I've given them. I do it twice a day. And um, after the dose this morning, throughout the day, she really perked up. So I think this is helping. Uh, I think I have to do it for like three to four days. So hopefully that'll knock it out. See them in there. They really like those perches now. The troublemakers are the silkies. Um, they do what they did their own thing. They do what they want. And I usually can chase them. I don't have to chase them. I just walk, walk around the coop <coughs> and then they go in. That's the troublemaking gang. Let's, let's go in. Go get in the house. Come on. Go to bed. Get up there. Come on. Go on. Get up there. It's almost like an act of ring around the rosy. Come on. The girls, look how they run. They, they run the funniest. I don't know if it's because their feet are covered in feathers or what, but it's, it's hilarious to watch them run. See, we do this about once or twice, and then they decide that um, mom is serious. Get in there. All right. And then we do that. And then we do that. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. And you, ah, you got feather. No. No. She cannot stand to be away from Blippi. Now, how can I do this with one hand? Okay. This is how you catch a chicken. Yeah. Okay. All right. Get in there. Come on, girl. Blippi. Felicia. Nope. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Shut the shut the door. Shut the door. Ah! Shut the door. Loose. Oh my god. What are you doing, you psycho? Okay, and then I count. How many chickens? Focus. Focus. It's not focusing. There. Okay. So, raven. Four. Five, six, seven. Okay. Seven are in there. Good night.